<laughs> okay. Um, now, let's say we got a power turbine. Uh, power turbine is supplied with the hot, high pressure air at stage one. Uh, so you can see at point one, that's the inlet, and it generates a 140 kilopascal, and that's the gauge pressure. It's the pressure that's given by the gauge, and a temperature of 450. If the power turbine is required to produce 80 kilowatt, which means 80 kilojoules per second of the shaft power output, what hot air flow rate is required? I want to find out how much air I need to actually provide from the inlet so it can spin at a specific rate and then produce that certain amount of power, uh, 80 kilo kilowatts of power, shaft power. I'm not considering any losses, anything. So all the losses and all that bit are not taken into account. Okay, so what we got is we got at the point one, 140 kilopascal and uh, 450 degrees centigrade. At point two, it's released into the atmosphere. So the final gas is at atmospheric pressure, which is a zero gauge pressure. Yeah, by atmospheric pressure is one bar, 10 to the five Pascal. So we got this value here, and that's the temperature T2. Okay, so when we, when we look at these questions, we see like how much power is going to generate. So here it's connected to the shaft and it's generating a power of minus 80 kilowatts. So that's the power it's generating, and this is shaft power. After that one, there are some mechanical losses, friction, heat losses, and all these bit this is after the shaft so we don't worry about that we ignore these losses now then we did the bernoulli's equation but before we did the bernoulli's equation we need to look at few assumption there is no heat losses so the q dot is zero no heat is being produced yeah and also the height z between point one and point two it's nearly same. So Z1 equals to Z2. Z1 is the height from datum line to here, and Z2 is the height from datum line to the point two. Yeah, I can ch choose a datum line somewhere here, uh, below below the two, the yellow thing. Okay. And also I can make an assumption the velocity at point one is equal to the velocity at point two. So I can make that assumption. Now here, minus 80 kilowatt, yes. Here, the work, yes. The, uh, the reason here, because the work done is negative, because work is done uh, by the turbine system. So I'm taking, considering it a negative work. So it's a minus 80. Now here, we just use the equation Q dot plus W dot is M dot, and uh, that's the kinetic energy, but this is M dot is mass per flow per second, the dot mean per second. Half V squared velocity plus G is 9.8. Z here is the height uh, difference, yes, yeah, height, and the H is is the internal, uh, is enthalpy. So then we got here in this case, we got the V1, equals to v2 and we got the z1 equals to z2 and q dot is zero now the inlet the v1 and v2 they are inlet and the exhaust velocity so we make that assumption that v1 equals to v2 because the inlet and outlet velocity is zero now then we make an assumption z1 equals z2 uh, the even though the inlet and the exhaust they are a different height there is a slight change but the difference with the potential energy compared to the other change in energy is so negligible that we ignore that one 
the reason is so negligible is because it is gas which has a very low density so when we use rho gh we can kind of ignore that one so a rho gz that that can be ignored okay then we also said the hot gases the q dot equals to zero the hot gases pass it through the turbine very quickly so it will just go from the point one to point two very quickly and it does not have the time to heat the to cause the heat loss of the system or to heat the system or to heat the surrounding or so on yeah. now we got the formula for the w dot because i can put the q dot zero i can put uh this g z that will become zero because there is no change in no change in because that's a change in z is zero so that will become zero there is no change in velocity that will become zero so these three few things will kind of disappear so you got m dot delta h so hence you got m dot delta h that thing will be kind kind of become zero so then we got the delta h is h2 minus h1 and we know that at constant pressure the formula for w is m cp delta h so m dot cp delta h if there is a dot here on top of the m there will be a dot on the other side on top of the w these two dots will be will be there okay. now um, Now here we know the inlet temperature, um, but we don't know the outlet temperature, the T2, the gas coming out of the system. So we have to kind of make an assumption how the gas behave when it passed through the, um, the turbine. The pressure at the inlet is 140 kilopascal. And then it goes to 100 kilopascal. Why I write down 100 kilopascal? Um, and um, as an expansion process happened because atmospheric pressure is 10 to the 5 bar. Yeah, 1 bar or 10 to the 5 pascal. So it goes from 140 to 100 kilopascal. As it happened, what happened? The gas expand. Yeah, the pressure reduced, the gas expand. And when the gas expand, it can do some work. There is no heat being lost. If there is no heat being lost, the process is known as adiabatic process. So the expansion is known as adiabatic expansion. We got the PVR equals constant, and that's how we define the adiabatic process. Another equation, which is PV equals to MRT or PV equals to NRT. Now there's an N or just before the R, there's an N and the M is missing. If it's an N, it's a number of moles. If it's an M, it's a mass in kilogram. And this is uh, the gas law, the general gas equation. Yeah, PV equals to RT or PV equals to NRT. Why the M uh, N is missing? Because we are talking about one mole. We are talking about one kilogram. So hence we just, do not write that one, but so if you write it down. So now using using the law, the first law, the P1, V1 equals to P2, V2, and I can put the gamma on the top. So P1, V1, R equals to P2, V2, R. And then using the general gas equation, I can get P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Now these give me the first condition and the second condition what is the first condition let's call it first stage before the inlet things enter the inlet and two is outlet when the things comes out of the outlet after that one i can do some arrangement i can rearrange these things and i can actually uh, get the p2 p1 as a subject and i can get v1 and v2 as a subject like rearrangement and the final rearrangements are in the slides but just to show you how the process works 
So if I want to do the P, P's on one side, I can do P1 over P2 because this P can be divided on that side. And I can bring the V1 on the other side. So that becomes a V2 over V1. And this is to the power R, and this is the power R or gamma, which can be written as V2 over V1 as a single power. So I just move the V1 on the other side. That's multiply. I move it down there, divide. Because they both have the same power, so I can just put bracket and put a power. If I want to find the P2, pressure 2, I can actually do that. Yeah, or oh, pressure 1, sorry. I can move the pressure 2 on that side. So this is one part of the equation. In case if I want to rearrange the whole thing for the volume, if the volume is missing, how I rearrange for the volume, I got the equation, let's say it's P1V1R gamma equals to P2V2 gamma. I can move again similar P1 over P2 on this side. I can do that. V1R. Now imagine I want to find out the V2. So V2 to the power R. To do that one, what I need to do is I need to get rid of the power. When you get rid of the power, the way you do is this. Well, imagine that gamma is, has a value, 1.5, 2, 3, whatever. I just do the whole thing, this whole thing, P1, P2, V1, gamma, and this one will come here yep and that's how you can find the v2 yep. okay so we got this equation we know how to rearrange for v1 v2 we just did that one here if you want to do that one this is gamma on the other side becomes one over gamma but use the one which i've used it's much easier much simplified then we got the other equation, P1, V1 over T1. If I rearrange that one, I can move, I can move this V2, it's on the top, I can move it down, that becomes a V2 here. Then this P1, which is here, and this T1, which is there, when I move on the other side, it flips over. So you can see the V2 goes down here, the P1 comes here, and the T2 goes there. So it becomes a P2, T1, and then P1, T2. I've just written down two different ways, but that can be a straight line, does not matter. Okay, so we got the values. We got, not the values, we got the formulas. Now, we need to look at how we can actually put that in the equation. We do not have the, the original uh, final temperature is the one we're missing. We have the original one at 450. So if I rearrange that whole equation, like P2 over P1 equals P2 over P1. Now this thing has a power of... 1 over gamma, but the thing on the other side, P2 or P1, has a power of 1. So I can move that on the other side and take away 1 from this. Just to show how this conversion actually happened. So we got the P2 over P1 to the power of 1 over gamma is equal to P2 over P1. When there is no power, the power is actually a 1. So here you can put 1 and times by T1 over T2. I can move this on the other side. But when I move that on the other side, it is going to be take away 1. So I can do take away 1. I can do minus 1. So that will be a P2. 